All right, welcome to Buckets tutorial number one, Earth Zoom using Apple Motion. This is a copycat tutorial that you'll see using After Effects. However, I'm trying to do the same effect using Motion. In order to do this tutorial, you're going to need some uh, images that you've downloaded using Google Images. This particular example, I'm using uh, photos of the airport in San Jose, Costa Rica. To get started, uh, you'll open up a new project in Motion. You'll already have your images downloaded to your computer. You can use as many as you'd like. Uh, I will be doing just two or three images for this scenario. Take your oldest or closest picture, the one most zoomed in, and drag it into the default layer that you have there in Motion. Create a new layer. This will be called layer number one. The older layer is just called layer. And drag your second closest photo into the new layer in this tutorial called layer one. Go ahead and collapse that layer so now you have two layers. The newer layer, layer one, you're going to reduce the opacity down to 50%. The older layer, the one on bottom here in the list, you are going to reduce the scale such that you can then match up the two photos. This is going to take some time. Now notice how the photo keeps trying to snap in place to an imaginary grid. Click on view and go down to snap and deselect that so that it will make it much easier for you to line the photos up and you won't constantly be hitting an imaginary grid line. <clears throat> this is going to take some time, tweak the different handles around the photo until you get it match up as close as possible. You don't have to be exact for a good effect, but the closer the better. After tweaking the different sides, uh, you're going to click on the newer layer, layer 1, bring the opacity back up to 100%. Click on the older layer and go up to object and click to bring to front and that'll put the, it on top of the list here, you'll notice in blue, then drag the older layer into the newer layer, so now it's part of the newer layer 1, collapse it down and you'll see you have layer 1, create a new layer which is now layer 2, drag your next photo into layer 2, collapse it so now you have two layers, layer 2 bring the opacity down to 50 percent, click on layer 1, layer 1 drag the handles down, you're going to reduce the scale so that you can uh, line up the two photos. Again, this is the tedious portion of the tutorial, lining up the photos. In the interest of time, I will uh, speed ahead a little bit here, but you'll do the same steps for each layer, for each photo as you get progressively closer. Bring the opacity back up to 100%, click on the older layer, go to object, bring to front. Older layer will now be on top of the list. Uh, take the older layer, drag it into the newer layer, this is layer 2 now, collapse it into one layer and click form new layer. So now you'll have layer 2 and layer 3. Layer 3, drag your next photo, the next furthest away from the earth's surface, drag that into the new layer, collapse it down so now you have two layers. On the newer layer, once collapsed, you're going to bring the opacity down to 50% or thereabouts. Again, that's just to make it easier to line the photos up. Click on the older layer, bring the scale down and proceed to try and match the two photos up. Again this is the more tedious part of the project. You can do this same procedure over and over for each layer. Uh, this is my last layer for this tutorial just for example purposes. After you've got them lined up as close as possible click on the new layer, bring the opacity back up to 100 percent, click on the older layer and click on object bring to front that'll put it on top then drag it inside of the new layer collapse it down so now you have one single layer that contains all your photos in the proper order now to see how it is the, what gives the effect of zooming in is the adjustment in the scale before you do this however you got to remember to set your anchor point which is up here at the top uh, instead of the pointer hold down click and hold and go to the anchor point and set that on the image that you want to be the focal point of the zoom. In this case, the airport. Now you notice as I drag the slide head, it doesn't change the picture. That's because I haven't adjusted the scale. So set the scale at the beginning scale that you want. In this case, 100%. Click record. Drag the playhead to the end. And I'll change the scale to 3000. And that will zoom into that view there. 
Again, play with the numbers. In this tutorial, it's 30,000. Now when I hit play, uh, you see it go from 100% scale down to 3,000. You'll notice the timing is a little bit different. In order to adjust the time, uh, stop the play, click down here on time code editor. Uh, you'll see a linear time code. You'll want to change that for the scale, the two scale settings to ease in. This will give you an exponential curve on the uh, keyframes. Once you have that, when you hit play, you'll notice a much smoother uh, scale in the zoom. And again, if you want, you can uh, click on Boleyn, however you say that word, and manually alter the keyframes by adding key points and things like that. Uh, this is fine for my purposes. Now, in the other tutorials that you'll see using After Effects, they add some spin to the photo. Same procedure. Uh, wipe to the front of the timeline. Go to rotation. Be sure you hit record. I always start at negative 90 for whatever reason and then wipe to the end of the timeline still recording and put the rotation to zero so now over time it'll rotate from negative 90 to zero so now when you hit play turn off record hit play make sure you're at the beginning of your timeline and you'll see that the photo now rotates now the other tutorials they have clouds so in motion there is a uh, particle emitter that comes with the program called Into the Clouds. You'll have to do some searching in the library to find it, but uh, create a new folder uh, for this cloud uh, particle emitter. This will be layer number four. Drag Into the Clouds into that folder. Uh, make sure it's on top of the other layer, meaning that it will appear on top of the photo. Uh, if you notice when I drag the playhead here, the clouds kind of appear small on the screen. I want them to be covering the screen, so I'm going to drag the entire layer 4 to the left so that we're further along in the particle emissions and uh, it'll give more of an effect of clouds. Now I don't want the clouds to obscure the entire photo. You can play with the obs obs uh, obscurity, the opacity, pardon me, uh, and you can play with the duration. Here I'm clicking on record, I'm having the opacity at zero, drag the playhead, move the opacity to 100%, move the playhead a little further, and then bring the opacity back down to zero and stop record. Now when I scroll to the beginning and hit play, this is what you get. And that's much too short, so pause it and you can drag the uh, keyframes further out if you'd like. Oop, I clicked on something wrong there, but anyway, drag the keyframes out. So now when you hit play, it's a little bit longer effect and gives you the illusion of going through clouds. Now you notice my cloud uh, movie, if you will, is much longer than I need and it's slowing down the rendering time. So I'm going to drag the cloud uh, movie uh, much shorter, a cloud layer much shorter because I don't need it to be the duration because it's not seen. Now when I hit play, it's a little bit slow here at the beginning, but then it'll pick up speed. And that has more to do with your computer and uh, other factors. <clears throat> so there you have it. You have a nice rotation, a cloud effect, everything that you see with After Effects but using Apple Motion. Again, I'm a novice, non-professional, self-taught. If you had some other tips or guidance, please leave a comment. Thank you.